Hello there, and today we're talking about the priestess or the high priestess, depending on which deck you're using. This is from the Thoth deck, the Curly Harris deck. She's one of my favorites. Lots going on there. As always with this deck, this deck is infinitely complex when it comes down to it. You can just keep looking at it and looking at it and finding more and more things. There's a lot of depth to it. But as far as the High Priestess goes, she is the embodiment of female as priestess, as female as clergy. Which, in a world where clergy has traditionally become male, wow, there's a lot of power there. The woman is as a connector to the divine, which is a huge thing, because for the most part, in the Western countries, women have been separated from divinity. They have been separated from connecting with God for themselves and for other people. That only a man can lead your service, that only a man can create spiritual worship for people. She contradicts that. She steps into the woman in a sacred context in a way that I feel many other things do not. She is the female cleric. She is female clergy. She is a priestess. And she radiates that strength. There's nothing that says, oh, she's not connected to the divine. She is very connected to the divine. And, you know, it's a trust of self, a willingness to let a woman lead you, a woman lead you into the divine. And not just on the goddess level for me, but on the mundane level, a willingness to know woman as sacred. Women as holy. And I feel, for me, a lot of that is what the high priestess embodies. You know, she's beyond just this exalted high priestess lady that stands up there and connects you. She is what you need to call in, whether you're male or female. That feminine connection of letting feminine divine connect with feminine mundane letting that power in to your life and whether whatever form that takes shape the high priestess you know it, she's got power she's got a lot of power and she's never let it be taken away she's held on to it she's clasped it she's treasured it she's held it close to her heart and all that she knows is holy and for me, that's a large part of what she is, of knowing that no matter who you are, you can step into divinity, that you have a direct connection to the divine, and that you can bring it into your heart. Whereas, like, the magician is much more, for me, knowing of your skills and the use of your skills. She is of that divine connection for me, more than anything else. The divine connection of sacred. The woman connecting to the divine and sacred. When when you look at Christianity, you know, pretty much the only really up until recent years, the only way women were really allowed to connect that way was through as in the Roman Catholic Church of becoming a nun. You know, women have had this power denied for a very long time. And it's one of the few things that have kind of kind of crept in there and never went away, never quite got that woman out completely of the sacred realm of connecting to the divine, of, you know, being willing to go out there and listen to what she has to tell you. And in finding that power in, in the woman as priest, as the woman and priestess, You know, it's 
one of those cards in many ways that, you know, tarot actually in general, along with oracle cards, is the working with it that creates a, a knowing, a knowledge that comes with it. And it's through the use of them and working through those symbols that you find the actual divination of it. It's not in the book. It's not in what I say. It's in what moves you out of this card. What do you feel in your heart? What do you feel in your gut when you think about this woman, this, this sacred, powerful woman and her connection to the divine? that's where you truly start to reach into cards. And part of the reason why I choose to work with cards as opposed to just reading people's energy alone, there's a lot that this can say that my words will never express for someone. When I, you know, just saying, step into the high priestess for someone with an energy reading. Without this card, this gives you a tangible thing. Okay, this is what she looks like. This is what she feels like. This is the power and energy I need to step into. And I think that's one of the, well, I know that's part of the reason why I choose to keep cards in my readings as opposed to just doing straight energy. So I can help people who need to step into energy such as this, do it. And they have a visual, it, visual symbol and symbols to work with. You know, tear her apart and find out what she means for you. And find out how you can bring this powerful connection to deity via the feminine into your life. Alrighty, talk to you later. Bye-bye.